In the winter of 2016, mutilated remains were found in the heart of Melbourne. The investigation that followed would uncover a trove of hidden treasures. The culprit, though, was never publicly held to account. I was contacted by a young man by the name of Chris, and he was interested in a particular work. A work published in 1789, written by Guillaume Antoine Olivier, who was a really significant figure in the history of French entomology. The person requesting the book was interested in seeing one particular beetle. It was a particular beetle he was doing as part of his um, PhD work. Neither of us had ever seen those particular books before, so we went up together to have a look. The first thing I noticed is it had the, the book plate from the Comte de Castelnau. Comte de Castelnau left the most important donation the library had received. He collected quite a substantial collection of some of the key works on natural history. And so there are some really beautifully illustrated works um, about different types of insects and about fish from around the world. They're very valuable on the market, many of these books, and there are books that we couldn't uh, procure or, or purchase today. But they're also special because they show us the working library of a gentleman scholar in the 19th century. From our point of view, they are irreplaceable. I started to turn the pages and it was truly magnificent. And I suddenly came across a page that just had a hole in it. That was when, to our horror, we discovered these books were mutilated. This book has been mutilated. You know, it's distressing. I was mortified because it, it felt like under our watch. The role of being a rare book curator is to be just one link in the chain, passing it on to the next generation. And I went back to the shelf and as I worked my way through, all of the volumes of Beatles cut out. Who would do this? You know, who would do this to such a beautiful and, and rare book? Who indeed and why? Why target these books? The answers to these questions lay in the 1860s when these books lived in a terrace house which once stood right here in East Melbourne and belonged to the French Consul General, a gentleman scholar who was said to be the illegitimate son of a French king, or an English king, depending on the source of the rumour. He was a man who went by many names, but was known to his few associates in Melbourne as Le Comte de Cassanel, or simply the Count. Here's a man who belongs to a great and ancient noble family, is able initially to indulge his passions for scientific inquiry and travel with family money. Casanel had led an expedition of four through the jungles and mountains of South America in which one man was murdered, another died and he himself left riddled with disease. He'd painstakingly acquired one of the largest entomology collections in Europe. And then, of course, after the 1848 revolution, uh, this family money seems to have been cut off and he starts looking for jobs. Well, he went into the consular service. He had various diplomatic postings around the world, everywhere from Brazil to Cape Town, Bangkok, and then in Melbourne. At one point, while Castanel was here, it was the second largest city in the world behind London. Castelnau died in 1880, the very peak of Melbourne's growth. More than a decade before he died, Castelnau sold his beetle collection to the museum after arriving in Melbourne. Beetles are the most common life force in the world. One in every five named animals is a beetle, and that's what Castelnau decided to make a collection of. So he travelled, but he also swapped and traded and bought specimens of beetles from around the world. It's really interesting, the Castelnau collection. When you pull a drawer out, and there's about 40 drawers of it, and you scan your eye across the drawer, and it looks as though there are beetles throughout the whole drawer. It's only when you begin to look closer that you realise that in fact some of the specimens are quite flat. Castleneau, being a naturalist, he was looking for new species. So when Castleneau knew about a certain species of beetle, but he didn't have a specimen, he cut it out of books and then he would paste it onto a piece of cardboard and then put it in the collection and it looks just like the other specimens sitting beside them in that. And if anyone knew of this link between books and beetles at the time, that knowledge was lost. That was until a recent chance conversation between librarians and curators about the curiosities of their respective Casanau collections. It was suddenly mentioned that it was quite odd because his beetle collection, some of the beetles were just made of paper, pinned in. And it was like a kind of 
light bulb moment. Suddenly our kind of mystery was, was resolved. And in fact, the books interestingly went from being kind of mutilated and damaged to suddenly being extraordinarily interesting things that were part of the wider story. Casa now left us more than just a story about the past. Within our lifetimes, there's lots of species becoming extinct. And so the new fossils, it's really our museum collections. And the Castelnau collection allows us to look back, directly back, to see how we came to where we are now, and then to be able to predict and hopefully manage the future.